Three years ago, I made this artwork. It was one of my most popular images that I created. And it was a huge success. And Alhamdulillah for Allah's plan for me. This artwork was one of the reasons why I joined the photo manipulation channel. And by the way, this artwork is inspired by The Last of Us game poster. In today's video, I'm going to recreate this artwork for two main reasons. One is to put the techniques that I learned in the test. And reason number two is to see how much I improved since then. I also want to challenge myself and make it better than the old one. And for that, I'm going to set this challenge as my main goal that I will try to achieve in this video. I will also share my own opinion and give you my conclusion at the end of this video. While I'm going in this journey of making this artwork, I'm going to show you the process of me making the compositing, the composition, fixing the values, matching the colors, adding the lights, and of course the final process. Hopefully you learned something from this video, and without any further ado, let's start making this artwork. Here is an image of all the keyboard shortcuts that I used in this artwork. I worked on a new document with the image size of 1496 on the width, 2560 on the height, and the resolution on 96. Then I went to the view menu and guides, and I clicked on new guides layout. Add three columns and three rows, and then click OK. I went back to the view menu, guides, and then click on lock guides, so we don't move these guides. Starting with the compositing, I used this image as the background to my work. I pasted it on the document and changed the location and the scale. Before we move any further, I just want to say, do not mind these layers, because I'm going to end up removing them anyways. I control clicked on the layer of the image that I decided to use as a background, and then I inverted the selection, and I clicked on Shift F5 for the fill menu, and I chose Content Aware. This was to fill the rest of the background with the trees. To cut the ground images, I select the lasso tool and I use it to select the area that I want to cut. When the area is highlighted, I go to select, I click and hold shift and I click on select and mask. I add radius, feather, contrast and I click OK. For this image, I wanted the mouse on the ground. To cut it, I used the blend if technique that we talked about before. I click on the layer two times and I used these slides on the blue, green, and red channel to get rid of the rest of the colors. When I'm satisfied with the result that I got, I click OK and I convert the layer to smart object and I rasterize it. Now it's ready to use as an object and I can take it to my work. For the next part, I worked on the surface or the floor or the ground. And that's by getting different stock images of grounds and then I used the lasso tool to select the parts that I want from every single image. I copied them and I pasted them on the first surface. And then using the magic wand tool and the eraser, I start to erase the edges to help create the smooth transition between the ground and the other parts. To cut the tree's trunks, I used the lasso tool and basically I start to follow the edges. And when my selection is ready, I used the select and mask to add radius, contrast, and featherness. And then I click OK. To cut trees from backgrounds like this, I used the blend if technique, which was very helpful because it was very quick and easy to use. For this one as an example, I took the blue color and that was it. I separate the slides to make a smoother transition and then I turn the layer to smart object and I rasterize it. And remember, always keep the original layer because you will have to go back, add a mask and start to paint in white color on the areas that you want to restore. I mainly used the lasso tool to cut this house from the stock image. The lasso tool is more accurate than the pen tool when you are working on areas like this or when you are working on an object that has a lot of bumps on its edges. And every time I select an area with the lasso tool, I use the select and mask to restore some details by adding radius, featherness and contrast. And when the area is one color, I use the magic wand tool to select it so I can save myself a lot of time. After I finished the house, I wanted to cut the tree. And to do that, I used the blend if.
Then I added a mask to the original layer. I filled it with black and start to paint white on the tree. I also used the blend if to cut out the ferns and the plants from the forest's background. Of course, with the help of the lasso tool and the select and mask menu. To cut this car, I used the select object tool. But of course, because it doesn't work perfectly yet, I had to use the lasso tool to select the areas that was left out. For the next parts, and to save time, it was just me cutting the objects and placing them on the artwork. I used the lasso tool as a placement for the pen tool to cut out the object that has a perfectly straight lines or straight edges, sorry. And I used the blend if to cut out the trees and the plants. And for extra details, as you can see in the screen right now, I cut out this tree using the same lasso and select and mask technique. But to cut out the branches, I used the blend if. After I selected this mouse from its stock image, I used the puppet warp tool to align it with the edges of the tree in the middle. Basically what I did is I added point and moved the mouse to align it with the tree. And to rotate it, I click and hold alt and I rotate the point. Here I selected this girl using the pen tool. Because it was supposed to be the main object in my artwork, I thought why not take my time and use the pen tool instead of the lasso tool. Here's how the image looks after we finish the composition. Now let's fix the values. And to fix the values I used the exposure mainly for darken the objects and add in contrast and i use the hue and saturation for making object darker and add in the fade i also used the brightness contrast adjustment layer for adding shadows ambient occlusion darken the bright areas and add in contrast i started by adding a black and white adjustment layer at the very top so i can view the image in black and white version that will help me view the values of the objects and I used the range of 5% to 30%, which means that the objects that are far in the background will have the value range of 20% to 30%. And the majority of the objects that are in the front will be in the range of 5% to 20%. Now I know this seems very dark, but at the end we will have an exposure adjustment layer that will lighten everything up. Now as you can see in the screen, I used the exposure adjustment layer to make the objects darker and to add contrast to them. Then I used the brightness and the contrast to add contrast and also to make the bright spots darker. And I used the hue and saturation adjustment layer to add lightness which will add the fade to the further objects in the background. It doesn't really matter what adjustment layer that you will use to fix the values as long as it does the job which is changing the value of the object. Make it dark, make it bright, make it contrasty or add the fade to it. You can always use a reference image to help guide you on what value range you should use for the objects. Me personally, I used the poster of the game. I opened the game poster image, I turned it to black and white and I added blur to it. Then I start to measure the value range of the objects. And by that, I decided to use the range from 5% to 30%. And as you can see in the screen right now, I used brightness and contrast adjustment layer with a black mask and start to paint with the white on the areas that are in the opposite side of the light source. Now that you get the idea of how to fix the values, I will speed up these parts. If you want to know more about how to fix the values, 
I have a video on this channel that explains the process in more depth. Also, if you want to master these techniques and see it live in action, check my Digital Landscape Reloaded course. The link is going to be in the description where I explain these basics and these techniques. And I also have full length tutorials without me cutting or skipping. The lighting of this house was too harsh. Here's how I fixed it. I entered the smart objects of the house and I added an empty layer with a mask and clipped it to the original house layer. And while clicking on the mask, I added a noise texture. Make sure the amount is at mask 400 and the distribution is uniform and then click OK. Keep selecting the mask and then add blur to it. From the filter menu, click on blur and Gaussian blur and add blur amount from 0.7 to 1. Click on the empty layer and select the soft brush with a low flow. Sample an area from the shadow between the shadow and the highlights and start to paint. As you can see, it doesn't look too flat and fake. The reason why is because we added a noise texture. My goal here is to get rid of that harsh line between the shadows and the highlights. And now that we finished fixing the values, it's time to match the colors. To fix the colors, I use the hue and saturation adjustment layer to desaturate the objects and change the hues. I used the levels adjustment layer to add cyan on the red channel and blue on the blue channels. I used the color balance adjustment layer as a helping adjustment layer to add the cyan and the blue. And I used the photo filter adjustment layer to add the cyan filter. And I used the curves adjustment layer mainly to add the red tones to the tree's trunks. Now keep in mind that all of these adjustment layers are going to be set to color blending mode except for the hue and saturation. First thing I did is I clicked on all the objects that needs the saturation and I clicked Ctrl U to add the hue and saturation menu and I desaturate the objects. If I'm clicking on a plant or a tree that has green color, I moved the hue to the left side to add the warmth tone. And for the tree trunks that has the greenish color, I desaturate them and I move the hue to the left side to add the red tone to the trunks. For this one, I used the curves adjustment layer. That was set to color blending mode. And what I did is I went to the red channel and I increased the red on the midtones. And I went to the blue channel and I decreased the blue on the midtones. And then I went to the green channel and I added magenta. And that's by decreasing the green on the midtones. And I'm not trying to give all of the plants and trees the same green color. Because different plants, species and different trees has different shades of green. So as long as the plants are matching in the values and the lighting, you are good to go. Now to give you an example on how I used the levels adjustment layer, keep an eye on that tree. I added levels adjustment layer set to color blending mode and I went to the red channel and I added cyan. Then I went to the blue channel and I added blue. It's okay if you add too much and it's too saturated because you can always go back and decrease the opacity. And to give you an example on how I used the photo filter adjustment layer, Keep an eye on that house in the back. I added the photo filter adjustment layer set to color blending mode and I chose the cyan from the filter menu. I also did the same thing to the car and my goal there is to match all of the objects at the back with the same cyanish filter. And remember, if the cyanish color is too much, you can always decrease the opacity. Then I went back to the ground layers and I tried to give them all the same red tone and that's by using the hue and saturation menu. And to add the fog or the haze effect, I added a new empty layer at the very top and I filled it with black. Then I went to filter, render, and I clicked on fibers. Get you a result that looks like that. And then rotate it 90 degree and increase the scale. While you are on the free transformation, use the height and the width to scale the image or to scale the layer. Give the width higher value than the height. And then I clicked on Ctrl A to select the canvas and then I went to image and I cropped it. While clicking on the layer, go to filter, blur and give it Gaussian blur. Do not add too much radius to the point where we lose the shape. Then I click on OK and I increase the width. Always make sure that every time you increase the size of an image that goes outside the canvas, 
to click Ctrl A to select the canvas or select all and then go to image and crop it. Add a new empty layer and fill it with black and add the clouds filter to it. Increase the clouds filter scale. Then select the whole canvas by clicking Ctrl A and click Ctrl C to copy the clouds. Add a mask to the fibers and enter it by clicking and holding Alt then click on the mask and paste the clouds texture and then apply it as a mask. Add a mask to it and fill it with black or just invert the mask by clicking Ctrl I and then by using the transparent gradient tool and the brush start to paint on areas that you want to add the haze to them. When you get a good result, apply the mask, then move it beneath the layers of the objects in the front. Use the eraser to erase the areas that you don't want the haze to affect. Click Ctrl U to use the hue and saturation menu and decrease the lightness, then click OK. Add levels adjustment layer and clip it to that haze layer. And then here you can add the color of the haze that you want. For my image, I added the cyan and the blue to match the color or the tone of the background. I merged the layer with the adjustment layer and I clicked on Ctrl U and I decreased the lightness once more. One of the trees in the back wasn't matching with the background so I went back and I added the exposure adjustment layer and I made it darker and I added the contrast. Then I used the hue and saturation to add lightness then levels adjustment layer to give it the cyan and the bluish color. And just by that, now it's matching with the rest of the background. I went back to the haze layer and I duplicated it. And I gave both layers the blue color so I don't get lost while looking for them. Then I moved it down till it's only covering the areas or the objects that are behind the houses. I flipped it on the horizon line and I moved it up. And I moved it down till it's not covering the house, only the trees behind it. That was a good place for it. And what I did next is I decreased the opacity. I went back to the ground layers that we turned them red uh, before, if you remember. And what I did is I added a levels adjustment layer set to color blender mode to every each one of them. And I tried to get rid of the red color by adding cyan, which is the opposite of the red color. The reason why I did that is because I wanted the shadows to have a cold filter or a cold tone. And the surface area in the front is supposed to be covered in shadows. Then I went back to the tree trunks that I added the magenta and the red color to them or the red tone. And I added a photo filter adjustment layer set to color blender mode and I chose the filter of cyan. And what I did is I only applied it on the bottom areas of the trunks. The reason why I did that is because some bacteria will cause this green color to um, grow on the bottom of the tree trunks because of the moss and the grass. I don't know if this is a fact, but I just like the color of it more like that. Now that the colors are matched, let's start with the lighting process. For the lighting part, I used the levels adjustment layer to add the contrast. I also used the curves adjustment layer also to add the contrast. I used color balance adjustment layer to add the cyan, magenta, and yellow to the lighting layers. And I used the exposure adjustment layer to paint the light with the brush. First thing first I did is I added a gradient adjustment layer and it was in transparent mode. I chose the radial one and I moved it to the right side at the top and I changed the blended mode to screen. Of course, I sampled the color from the background and then I start to change the angle of it so I make it spread more. And my goal of doing that is to add my light source, which is going to be the sunlight. With a hue and saturation adjustment layer, I started to change the hue to get a warmer color on my light source. To add the lighting layer, what I do is I click on the object that I want to add the lighting to and I duplicate it by clicking and holding Alt and moving it to the top. Then I clip it to the original layer and I change the blending mode to screen. I desaturate it and I change the hue to a warmer color. Then using a levels or curves adjustment layer, what I do is I add contrast. 
Then I click OK and next I add a mask to that layer and I fill it with black either by using the fill menu or just by clicking on Ctrl I. Then go to filter, render and add clouds. After you click on clouds, the clouds will be applied to the mask. Using levels or curves, add contrast on that mask. I stop when it starts to look like it is a light spot casting on that trees. Then with a soft brush and a black color, I start to paint on the opposite side of the light source. After that, I click on the lighting layer and I click on Ctrl B to add color balance. Most of the time with this artwork, I add cyan and magenta and yellow. Now I want you to remember these steps because it's going to be applied on all of the objects that you see in this artwork. Except for the ground or the surface because I'm going to be using a different technique. I'm going to speed up this part because it's the same steps repeating again and again. Mind you, this video is already 14 minutes long. Now for the ground, I added an empty layer and filled it with black. Then I went to filter and I added clouds. Make sure the colors are in black and white. Add another empty layer and fill it with black and move it beneath the clouds layer. Click on the clouds layer and change the blending mode to vivid light. What I do next is I click on Ctrl L to add the levels menu and I move the bright slide to the left side. And my goal here is to get the texture of the rays light. That will be casting through the three branches. Then I merged the two layers together and I used the blend if to get rid of the black areas. Then I hide the layer and I hide the layer of the girl too. I added an empty layer at the top and then I clicked on Shift Ctrl Alt E to merge all the layers at the top. Just a quick note before we continue. Notice how in the layer menu most of the layers are gone. The reason why is because I clicked on Shift Ctrl E instead of Shift Ctrl Alt E. So make sure you click on Shift Ctrl Alt E so you don't have to face this problem. Also make sure to save a BSD file as a backup every now and then. So when you make mistakes like this, you will find a backup to restore your files or your layers. After I merge all the layers, I go to the layer menu and I click on duplicate layer on a new document. I name that document displacement because I'm going to create a displacement map. Now we are on the new document. What you are going to do is go to image menu and change the mode to grayscale. Then click on Ctrl L for the levels menu and add contrast. Add a Gaussian blur by one pixel and click OK. Now save that document as a BSD file on your computer. Select the spots that we made before and using the Ctrl T free transformation tool, I try to match the perspective with the ground or the surface. After I do that, I try to increase the scale of it. Now this is up to you. For me, I wanted a big spots shape to give the feel that the branches of the trees that are blocking the sunlight are huge. After I get the shape that I want, I click on Ctrl A to select all and then I go to image and I crop it. Then again, I click on Ctrl A to select all and this time I go to filter, distort and I select displace. I gave the horizon scale higher value than the vertical scale. Then I clicked OK and I selected the displacement PSD that we created before. The reason why I did that is to give the spots the texture of the ground. Then I added blur to it. Then I duplicated the layer and I give it more blur. And this is going to be the bloom effect. I converted the layer to smart object and I rasterize it and I did the same to the one beneath it. Then I changed the blended mode of the top layer to screen blended mode. Then I merged them together. Then I clicked Ctrl A to select all, then I cropped the image. Then I added an empty layer and filled it with black and merged it with the spots. Then clicked Ctrl A to select all, then Ctrl C to copy it. Now I'm going to use it as a mask. What I do now is I go to the floor or the surface layers and I do the same steps of adding the lighting. Except for this time, I'm not going to add the clouds. I'm going to add the spots layer that we created as a mask. Then I use the Ctrl L levels to add contrast to the lighting layer. Then I select the layer and I go to image, adjustment, exposure, and I add exposure to make it brighter. Then I click on Ctrl U to add the hue and saturation menu and I desaturate it and I move the hues to the left. Then Ctrl B for the color balance. 
and I add the magenta, yellow, sometimes cyan, sometimes red. And now I'm going to speed up this part because it's going to be the same steps that I just explained, repeating again and again. Then I went back to the car and the house layers and I added the lighting layers to them. I did not like the shape of the furnace plants that I added at the beginning, so I decided to replace them with these ones. I used Blend If to cut them from the background with the help of the lasso tool and select and mask menu. Then I based them on the artwork and I applied the same steps, the same process of fixing the values, matching the colors and adding the lighting. I got this mauve texture and I used the blend if to separate the green colors from the dirt. And then I copied it and pasted it on the artwork and then I aligned it with the tree in the front. And my goal is to cover that tree with the moss. And I did that by clicking Ctrl T free transformation tool. And I rotate it 90 degree and I put it in front of the tree just like that. I added a mask to it and I start to paint black on the areas that I don't want it to cover. To get rid of that uh, flat edge, what I did is I removed the area on the edge of the tree. Then I selected again and I used the ripple effect or the ripple effect that you can find in distort menu. Then I select it again and I flipped it on the vertical line. Then I applied the ripple effect again. And that helped removing that flat edge. Then I went to fix the values, the colors and the lighting of that mouse texture. Then I got these furnace plants from another stock image. I liked the shape of them more so I decided to copy them and paste them on my work after I cut them from the stock image. Then of course went to the process of fixing the values, colors, lighting as I did with all of the objects. I went back to that tree trunk layer and what I did is I duplicated the layer of the lighting and I deleted the mask from it, the clouds mask. And I added another mask, filled it with black and with a soft brush with white color I start to paint on the areas that are facing the light source. And I did the same with the other tree trunk on the left side. Except for this one, I had to duplicate the lighting layer again because I didn't add one to it at the beginning because I forgot. Now for the light rays, I duplicated the gradient layer at the top and I clicked two times and I changed the mode to angle. I clicked on the gradient, the transparent one, and I changed the type to noise on roughness 100% and I took all of the saturation and I checked transparency and start to change the angle till I get the uh, perfect shape of the rays. I was satisfied with this shape, so I decided to keep it and I rasterized the layer and I applied the mask. What I did next is I added a mask to that layer and I used the gradient map, the transparent one with a black color and start to hide some of the areas that I didn't want the uh, light rays to reach. Then I applied the mask and I went to filter, blur, and I clicked on blur gallery and I chose the iris blur. And I increased the blur too much and start to align the shape till I get a shape that I'm satisfied with. I end up using this shape. Next, I added a mask to it and I filled it with black. Then I went to filter, render, and clouds. Then I removed the lock between the layer and the layer mask. Then I increased the size of the cloud's texture. I selected the layer, then I clicked on Ctrl U to add the lightness to the maximum, and then I clicked on Ctrl U again and I decreased the lightness. 
Then I added a photo filter adjustment layer and I clipped it to it. I changed the filter to cyan and I changed the blending mode of the adjustment layer to color. Then I added a color balance adjustment layer. I added red, magenta and yellow. Then I merged all the three layers together and I changed the blending mode to screen and I decreased the flow. I started to duplicate the branches layer and I changed the shape of it by using the puppet warp tool and of course just adding points and rotating them and moving them just to add some of the details. After I showed the image to my friend, he suggests that I stick to the old idea of adding the guitar alone without a person holding it. So what I did is I removed the girl and replaced it with this acoustic guitar and I went to the process of fixing the values, the matching the colors and adding the light into it. I added exposure adjustment layer to add the shadows and I added a photo filter applied to it set to color blending mode and the filter on cyan. I went back to the car layer and what I did is I duplicated the lighting layer. I duplicated it two times actually because the car material is supposed to reflect the light more than anything in the image because it's made uh, out of iron or metal. I added a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and I increased the brightness on the uh, guitar. And with a soft brush and white color, I start to paint on the direction of the light source. The foreground felt empty, so what I did is I got these ferns plants and I cut it using the select and mask. I pasted it on the artwork and I moved it to the front. And as you guessed, I went through the process of fixing the values and fixing the colors, but I did not add the lighting. To lighten the work, I add exposure adjustment layer and I increased the exposure from 0 to 1. And then I click on Shift, Control, Alt, E to merge all the layers in one layer at the top. I click on that layer and then I go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp, Mask. I add the amount of 100% and the radius on 1.0. I add a new empty layer and I fill it with black. Then I go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. The amount is at the mask. Make sure to check the monochromatic and then add a blur of 0.7 or 1. And then I change the blending mode to screen and I decrease the opacity to between 10% to 5%. And then I click on Shift, Control, Alt, E to merge all the layers again in a new layer at the top. And then I go to Filter, Lens Correction, Custom, and I add the amount of minus 50 on the red and plus 50 on the blue. Then I add just a bit of vintage and then I click OK. And now it's time for the color grading. I merge all the layers at the top once more. And then I go to filter, camera raw filter. And here's what I'm going to change in the camera raw filter menu. First, I'm going to the basic and then I'm going to add clarity. It's up to you on what amount you want to add. I decrease the vibrance and I increase the saturation just a bit. On the color grading tab, I go to the shadows and I add the amount of 40 on the hue and the saturation between 5 to 10. For the midtones, I add 80 on the hue and the saturation between 8 and 10. And for the highlights, I add 220 on the hue, 50 on the saturation. And then on the effect tab, I add vintage and grain. Here it's up for you on what amount you want to add and then click OK. When it's a sunny day, we have to add the bloom effect. To do that, I merge all the layers once more, and then using levels menu, I add too much contrast between the dark areas and the bright areas. After I do that, I turn the image to black and white by clicking on Shift Control U. Now that the image is in black and white, click on Control A to select the canvas, Control C to copy it, and then duplicate the final image once more. Add a mask to it, enter the mask and paste that black and white image and then apply it. After you apply it, go to filter, blur and add Gaussian blur. Add the radius amount between 10 to 15, then click OK. 
and change the blending mode to screen and here's the before and here's the after here are some extra adjustment layers that i added off camera let's go through them and see what i did first i add this curves adjustment layer and i decreased the midtones and I only applied it on the surface on the bottom area. Then I added exposure adjustment layer and I increased the exposure and I only applied it to the surface to make it brighter. Then I added another exposure adjustment layer and I increased the exposure and I applied it to the middle areas following the source of the light. Then I added a photo filter set to a warm filter set to color blending mode and I decreased the opacity. Then I added brightness and contrast adjustment layer to add contrast. And finally, I added brightness and contrast adjustment layer and I decreased the brightness and I only painted on the areas that I wanted to add shadows to. In case you found one of these techniques that I showed in the video hard to understand, here are some recommended videos where I explain these techniques more in depth. You will find the link in the description down below. Now that we are finished with this artwork, I'm going to give you my opinions and my conclusion. First thing that I want to talk about is the techniques. The techniques that I learned since the first time I made the first artwork were useful. They made everything easy, quicker and more accurate. Especially the blend if technique that worked flawlessly in this artwork. Now let's compare the new artwork with the old artwork. For the old artwork, it has less details, the quality of the stock images was low, unprofessional compositing of objects, and by that I mean cutting objects from the background, perspective was off, it was far from reality, it had better color grading, and it took me more time to make. And now for the new artwork, I paid more attention to details, and I added more objects. The quality of the stock images was high, it was closer to the game poster. It was more realistic, it had better perspective and better compositing work. The color grading wasn't better than the old one but it was more realistic. It took less time to make. Now to the most important question of this challenge. Is the new artwork better than the old one? Before I answer this question, let's make it clear that it depends on the taste. Me personally, I think the new artwork is way better than the old one. And I believe I improved a lot since then. My understanding of the compositing and the composition, the values, the colors and the lighting, and the perspective has gotten better with the time. Now I'm curious to know your opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Which artwork you think it's better? Is it the old one or the new one? If you have learned something from this video, give us a like and also subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to watch my latest video where I explained blend if technique in more depth. Follow us on our social medias. Don't forget to check my digital landscape reloaded course and I will see you in the next videos. Peace.